Hello, my name is Claire Russell and I'm making this video today because I was inspired to talk to you about all the changes which are happening, everything that we're experiencing as time is speeding up, as many different changes are happening around the world. And for me, my path has always been one to follow my intuition and I feel that the two are connected, that as we move into new cycles, a new time, we're going to be relying more and more on our intuition. So right now, it's uh, 11th of December 2012, and I've come from the UK to Mexico to be part of many groups, many diverse groups, who are celebrating the end of one cycle and the beginning of the next. So here in Mexico is one of the places where those cycles have really been recognised by the indigenous people, and especially the elders or the timekeepers of the Mayans. And what they understand, or how they understand time, is that time works in cycles, it's not linear. So there's cycles which are based on the moon, cycles which are based on the sun, cycles which are based on our planetary system and our relationship to them. And that as we pass through these cycles, we move through different qualities of time, different eras of time. And on the 21st of December 2012, we come to the end of one really big cycle of 5,125 years. And that we move into a new era, a new stage, or from the, um, the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. And there's much that can be said about that and what it means. But for me, I suppose at the heart of it, what I see as important is that we're a point of huge opportunity, an opportunity to envision what we want to create in the future and, and how we're going to do that. Yet at the same time, at the beginning and end of cycles, there's a lot of change happening, a lot of um, transformation of old paradigms into a new way that hasn't yet arrived yet. We don't know what that's going to be. And so that can cause some turmoil, that can cause um, some disruption and we're maybe seeing this well we're definitely seeing this on a global level with different peoples um, in revolution calling for their societies their governments to be run in different ways and we're seeing it obviously with our environment with new ways that we need to step into in order to be sustainable and to continue a thriving way of living into the future but maybe also you might be seeing it on a personal level i know that i'm witnessing it in my own life and in other people's lives that we're in transition. Now that could be um, outwardly manifest in changes in your work, changes in your relationships, but probably also, and most importantly, on the inner levels, a change um, maybe in how you perceive things, a change in what's the priority in your life, what are the most important things in your life. And that change can be really exciting, and at the same time it can be really scary, <laughs> because what was discovering, and I think part of this end of cycles and start of new ones, is as much as we'd want to hold on to the old way of thinking or the old way of being, it's just not going to be possible in the same way. So for example, it's no longer true that you have a job for life. For most people, they're not in the same partnership for life. You probably move house, move location, move country in your life. The same kind of stability, security, routine that has happened in the past is, no, is not really present here anymore. And in many ways that's very liberating, and in other ways it can be a little bit daunting. And so we need to look at, well, how are we going to approach this opportunity? Because really, for all of us who are alive now, what we're looking at is the old rules are being done away with, and we're here to be able to rewrite the rules of how we want to create our future and what that's going to look like, which is great. Um, again, as I say, an opportunity, but often with those times of opportunity, there's crises that come up, and we're seeing that too. Um, and so as I'm considering this, and I'm considering it from the platform of how do we go into this new period? How are we going to successfully move into a period of time of which everyone says, well, we don't know what that's going to be? Um, and my response to that is, we have to be really clear on our inner compass. We have to develop a new faculty, actually, which is abundantly creative, deeply insightful, can take in vast amounts of information and new perspectives, can hold all of that in an interconnected whole, and also can work very fast. As we know, this kind of time is speeding up, and we're finding our way of 
um, of operating in a space where there's so much more richness of experience within every minute and every day. And I, I would say my perspective on what's going to help us here is going to be our intuition. That actually an intuitive way of understanding this inner guidance, this inner tutor, is going to be really the new way of wisdom, the new way of working on the other side of this shift in the new cycle. It has to be. Um, if we look at what we've got, become used to in Western society, our new way of knowing things, of rationality, of a me mechanistic uh, technological understanding of things that was useful to us in the industrial age, these are the things that we're now questioning that are actually showing to be not sustainable as the only path forward. Yes, they have their role, but there's much more. There's a broader spectrum for us to step into. And that really is this role of the intuition, because it's our intuition that can evolve with us. It's our intuition that can grow with these changes. Um, and there's reasons for that. Firstly, uh, my experience of intuition is that it's, it's constantly creating, it's constantly abundant with options and possibilities and that's because it's timeless actually our intuition is something we access in the now and that now is so vast that it can access the past and the future it's a lovely bird up there and um and at the same time it retains um this openness to everything that's here it's, a, it's part of the interconnected whole when you're working with your intuition it's not just a skill you're developing in yourself, what you're doing is tapping into a field of information which the quantum physicists talk about, which um, if you sat still in meditation you might have experienced as a stillness, a feeling of oneness and connection to everything. And definitely as an artist um, you might have experienced that as um, inspiration flowing through to you, which can often be quite sensorial as well as uh, beautiful. Um, and our intuition, it allows us to unfold into new ways of thinking. It's actually very flexible because it's a direct knowledge. Um, so instead of having to learn through a linear path of X plus Y means that we'll get to such and such conclusion, what actually happens is you feel and sense it directly. You feel the knowledge. It's a process of gnosis, a process of direct understanding. And and when that happens, you're in this place of constantly being connected to your experience as it is now, as it is in this moment. And that gives you uh, an ability to access all the wisdom that's around us. Um, and it also creates us to be part of an interconnected whole, which is going to be so necessary in this new period that we're moving into. Really, if you like, intuition might have been seen as a luxury in the past or something that a few people had a real skill at, whereas what really came to me as I was here in Mexico as we were celebrating this change of the cycles is that it's becoming a necessity, it's going to be the way that we're able to work together because it has this interconnectedness, because it has this diversity and wholeness in how we know information, not just through our mental capacity but through our, our emotions, through our thoughts, through our body, through our senses, through telepathy, through our dreams, it weaves this ability to take information from everywhere and make it make sense. And why is that going to be important? Because we have to work as one whole in the future. If we're going to work as one global organism that's synchronized, we need to be listening to each other, we need to be listening to the whole, loving the whole, understanding the needs of the whole. And our intuition is going to greatly help us in that because it, it's this connection, it's this heart connection and this understanding and appreciation of everything that is around us, um, which is wonderful. And the wonderful thing about intuition is it's there, it's accessible for you. So you don't have to go to um, a person for it, you don't have to use a machine for it, it's there when you wake up in the morning. Um, the thing about having grown up in a in a Western society it's probably quite likely it's not something you've been used to using and that it's a, a part of you that requires kind of remembering and reclaiming and that path of remembering and reclaiming is is very important to refine it because if, if you like the intuition is, is that you're becoming a decoder of the information of the universe you're becoming a clear channel to um, hear what's really important and what's really true because 
it's like um, you're tuning into the vibrations and the energy of reality as it really is. So we might imagine that rationality, logic, um, great though it is, has been focused just on one area of reality. Kind of like in a magic trick where there's two hands and maybe you're, you're being shown to get, take your attention to one hand and the real illusion is being performed by the other. So what intuition does, it just broadens your perspective, broadens your understanding, it becomes holistic. So you not only see the magic trick and maybe enjoy that illusional trick, but you also see in what it sits and the wider perspective. And that's going to be very important, I think, over these times. Um, so I suppose there's a little bit of a kind of manifesto for me about this, of wanting to share how valuable I think it is to tune into our intuition, to connect with it, to know what it means for us. In fact, it's our way of answering that, that fundamental question of, um, or statement of know thyself to thy own self be true. And to, to really do that, we have to follow this intuitive path, this Gnostic path, to directly question and ask ourselves and listen to ourselves. So I think it's necessary, but it's also very beautiful. There's many benefits that happen in your life. I know for me personally, it's given me an ease and confidence in making decisions because I feel I have exactly what I need information-wise, insight, feeling, sensing, knowing to make decisions harmoniously. Um, it's also opened up a huge amount of creativity for me and art artistic expression. So the nature of intuition is it creates possibilities. Um, it creates connections and you see new ways of being. Um, you're no longer trapped by this is how I am, but you go, oh wow, I wonder what's here. Maybe I can sing, maybe I can write poetry. And then you'll surprise yourself, definitely. Um, on another level, I suppose I'm going on a deeper level, it's given great level of meaning to my life. So I've always loved my life, always felt a huge amount of positivity to everything and, and loving my, having my family, my friends and, and feeling the importance and value yet at the same time my intuition has like taken me beyond what I didn't know was there before which was a glass ceiling my intuition has taken me to the next level of feeling connected to my purpose feeling fulfilled understanding my place in the world feeling a sense of belonging to the whole and being part of that and and that's given such a depth of meaning that now it's the way I live my life that I know every single event circumstance um, has a significance and a meaning which is deeply supportive um, and I suppose that's part of a wider picture of knowing the interconnectedness of everything in a way which is just sheer magic really to feel a direct deep connection to uh, not only myself but to the nature around us to plants to animals to spaces that everything opens up in this beautiful telepathic conversation with the world um, and it's totally possible for us all to access. That's the beautiful thing about it, is actually, how do we become more intuitive? How do we uh, gain this faculty? It's, it's really through practice. Practice and experience, which is what um, I encourage people to do through events and workshops, just giving lots of exercises, meditations, and principles for being intuitive. We can also draw on um, all of the cultures that have been really beautifully developing the intuitive wisdom over time. So whereas maybe the last 300 years in, in Western culture we've been developing our rationality, our technology, the indigenous peoples, the Eastern traditions, um, all of the healers and alternative practitioners have been developing an understanding and exploring intuition for us and we can delve into that knowledge um, and really gain a lot of insight. And so what else do I want to say? Oh, about the, the interconnectedness of everything. There's a follow on from that, is that when we feel connected to everything, we lose fear. Fear decreases hugely, and in its place, you'll find a, a huge amount of love, a sense of belonging, um, a sense of awe and wonder at the world around you. Um, and it also just leaves us realising that loneliness is, is just a misunderstanding. That really, instead of being a visitor to this world, or the world being separate from us, we're a fundamental part of it. And, and in this beautiful cycle of telepathic communication all the time. Um, 
and that for me is something very, very special as well, and also a hugely important aspect in working into this new cycle and what we want to create, and leaving fear behind as something from the past. Um, so I will probably stop talking now, and I just hope that that's inspired you to consider how do you know yourself, how do you stay true to yourself, um, in what ways does your intuition talk to you, what senses, that gut feeling, that um, inner voice, the stillness, what comes from that silent space inside you, and to give yourself space to listen to that more. So just take time to listen, to breathe, to sit in nature, um, to listen with an open heart, with curiosity, with sensitivity, and trust that whatever comes back to you, whatever wisdom you gain, through signs, through synchronicities, through inner sensing, um, through your dreams, through your visions. Cherish it. Really cherish it and allow it to grow and nurture it because it's going to be your, your compass for your future. Okay, so if you would like to find out more about the events that I run, you can go to metalife.org.uk and also to sacreddestinations.org. Um, in the meantime, thank you very much for sharing this time with me and hope to meet you all soon.